So let's take a look at a, a pseudo first order conditions. So we have our generic rate law that the rate is equal to some rate constant. I'm just going to say some reactant, some product and squared. All right, we can say that it is first order with respect to A and that it is second order with respect to B and that the consequences of this is that if you double A, the reaction rate doubles. If you double B, the reaction rate goes up by a factor of four or something along those lines. Now, <clears throat> there's another way of doing this. You can So with that information in mind, what if you just wanted to look at one of the components, A or B? One of the ways we do this traditionally in, in the lab is with what we call pseudo first order conditions. And in chemistry's long tradition of messing with people trying to learn chemistry, Pseudo first order conditions have nothing to do with uh, measuring something that's first order. Okay. Pseudo first order conditions, so if we have this case where we have A and B, if we wanted to look at A, we would take B and set it to a very high concentration. Now, if you remember, we got a chemical reaction going on, A plus B going to C. If you have a very high concentration of, of B, so we'll just say uh, 1 molar, and we have concentration of A down to 0 0.001 molar, 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd molar, <clears throat> even if you were to consume all of the A, the concentration of B would only change a minimal, minuscule amount. So rather than being one molar, it'd be, it'd be 0.9999 molar, which is, for all intents and purposes, one molar. So what this does in, in terms of the rate is that even though B would be second order, because during the course of the reaction, it barely changes. It is constant. It becomes effectively constant during these conditions. At very high con when the concentration is very, very high, the concentration doesn't change really mu all that much, and B becomes a constant. And what that means is that everything in this box is a constant. And so we can then fold that into the rate which again is also a constant. And so mathematically, we got a new rate we'll just call this rate prime will be equal to a new constant K A where the concentration of B gets folded in. Now, Pseudo first order rate conditions are very common in water solution. I mean, if you actually look at the concentration of water, water is 55 molar. All right. Now, you can't actually, there's very few times when you're actually going to get more concentrated than that. So even if you ran a reaction that had water as one of the pro reactants in the, in the rate equation, the rate equation. Um, the rate is going to be effectively unchanged by the water that's consumed. And so this very, very high concentration of water um, uh, becomes effectively treated as a constant. And so it doesn't it doesn't impact the rate. So many times you don't see water show up in rates. There are many reactions like this. And in the lab, it's a very useful way of getting at information. It's very easy to, to peg out the concentration of A to measure the effect of B. Now, actually, this is what we do in the next set of equations where we're talking about the integrated rate laws. And so it's a common practical technique you raise the concentration of A to a very high amount, and then you watch how B changes with time. 
and you can get an idea of what the order is with respect to B, what the order is with respect to A, much the same way we did with the, with the initial rate method. All right. So quick and very easy about pseudo first order conditions. Pseudo first order conditions allow us to treat a com one of the components as effectively first order and its concentration is then considered a constant over the time frame of the reaction. Very common in biological systems. All right.